from the dream Los Angeles. Um, sitting here with my co-host, my dog, Chief, and uh, our esteemed, esteemed creative guests, just all around great creatives, Lexi Underwood, Makaya Green, let, let, and let's, <laughs> let's mention recently Emmy, now Emmy Award winning Makaya Green. Ooh, ooh. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, thank you both for, uh, yeah. for joining us. I think Thank this is going to be an yeah. amazing conversation. We always kind of have amazing conversations here. And uh, again, thank you guys for, for, for joining us. Let's get thank into it. Yeah. 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 Nah, excited, excited. Um, I don't even know where to start. I'm just excited. Like, she just I, won an Emmy. That's yeah. true. That's true. <laughs> um, but no, I, I think, um, you know, when we were, we were talking about it, and I've been talking to you for a mm -hmm. while about being on the show. I actually met Lexi. Hey, was that like 2019 maybe? I think so. About like a teen, yeah. Sum, teen Vogue Summit mm -hmm. that okay. we had at Puma. Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay. And um, I met her and her mother, Stephanie. And Shout just, out to Stephanie. We, hey, just, uh, <laughs> <laughs> we just hit it off. And, you know, I think we had such an enriched conversation even yeah. back then. And I think it's so dope and amazing to see the traject what the trajectory has been in such a short time. So one, congratulations yes. on that, you know what I mean? My daughter loves you also too. Uh -huh. And then two, I wanted to just talk to you a little bit about that, like, you know, when did the vision for you, you know, becoming an actress, being in entertainment, being so young, you're 19, yeah. when did that start for you? Yeah, I mean, it started for me like really, really early. Um, I'm originally from DC. And so growing up in DC, I kind of felt as though there weren't too many options when it came to the arts it, it felt like almost like you're either going to be like a politician like have a desk job or be an athlete like those were like the three career paths really? in DC. yeah for me at least growing okay. up um i felt that way and so i um ever since i was younger i was like always searching like what can i do that that has anything to do with the arts so um at the age of three i was like in ballet and then by like six i was like trying to pick up a piano and like learn different instruments but it wasn't until i was about 10 where it really clicked to me that i wanted to be an actor um, I feel like I really fell in love with acting through Broadway. Mm -hmm. um, I remember the first time I saw like my first Broadway show, it was Lion King on Broadway. My parents took me to go see it and it was the first time that number one, like I saw anything like that before, but then also seeing a bunch of black creatives in the show mm -hmm. made me feel as though I could do that too. Mm -hmm. um, and so from then on, it was just kind of like game time. Like I, I, I knew that that's what I wanted to do and I wasn't stopping until I got there. Um, and so by the age of 11, I, I actually booked Lion King. Like I found an open call audition. Fire. I found an open call audition. <laughs> I looked it up. Talk to I, him, yeah. Lexi. <laughs> Talk to him, Lexi. But I begged my parents. I was like, it was She was the, like game time, right, sorry. Right, no seriously, <laughs> but like I begged my parents. It was in Jersey, so we drove down to Jersey and it was just really all a part of God's plan. And from then on, it was just, it was everything else kind of like fell into fell into line. But it's, it's been a journey. Um, it's been a, a lot of lot of years of, of hard work, of praying, and like just staying faithful over like understanding what God has has in store for me. Because I definitely have um, lost sight sometimes, and I've gotten discouraged, and I've gotten um, distracted. Um, but I think it's like really important in those moments, like just to remain like faithful and to mm -hmm. to know like that. I'm not here just because like, oh, I'm here to be here. Like I'm here for a reason and God placed me here for a reason. So to like remain focused on that. So that's how, that's how you, that's how you walk through those moments when mm -hmm. you feel discouraged. Yeah, absolutely. Cause I mean, it's like, I wouldn't, I wouldn't have this passion. I wouldn't have this talent. I wouldn't have this dream for nothing. Um, and so I just know that like everything that has led me to this moment, like to this present moment right now, it wasn't just a coincidence. Um, and so I have to kind of, I have to stay faithful over the little things. I have to stay faithful over like what I know God is doing in my life. Because if I get discouraged and if I, you know, start to compare my journey to somebody else's, mm -hmm. I'm just going to stay stagnant. Like I'm going to mm -hmm. stay in the same place. Mm -hmm. But if I have that positive attitude and I have that energy and I continue to like, <laughs> Yeah, but if I yeah. if I continue Real to push yeah. forward, Facts. then I know that it's all gonna work together for me. Whether it's like now or in a couple of years, but it's all eventually gonna work out. Yeah, Makaya, speak to that or pick up on that. Man, I mean, it 
what you're saying is resonating mm -hmm. with me because I think we're living in a time where comparison has become like a part of the culture. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, we're constantly inundated with what everybody else is doing. Um, and it just naturally, I think, forces us to instantly be like, oh, okay, well, where am I in relationship to that? Mm -hmm. um, and this year I've been spending a lot of intentional time just like with myself and in the house and also traveling, but really just trying to go inward and be like, what do I actually want once I like divorce myself from all these ideas of what I think I'm supposed to be doing mm -hmm. or where I think I'm supposed to be. And then also giving myself credit for being like, girl, like even where you are, you wanted to be five, 10 years ago. like you were like, this was like a 20 year dream, you know? And just like recognizing that, like, it's okay. Like you are on your path and like, it's working. It's crazy how we set goals, right? And then we reach them and then we move the goalposts and they get down on ourselves. <laughs> yes. Immediately, it's, it's, right. Like, yes. It's crazy. It's um, wild. It's wild. Speak to your journey a little bit more, like your upbringing, where you're from, you know, the same kind of like winded entertainment producing, directing these... Your bucket. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Let's talk about your bucket. Let's talk about your, bu your bucket. <laughs> Absolutely. So, oh my gosh. So, I am originally from Dallas, Texas. Okay. Um, I was born there. My mom um, grew up in Compton. And so, every summer, I would... Me and, you know, me and my younger brother would come out here and just spend the summer with my cousins and my family. And I loved it so much, I kept asking, when are we moving to LA? And at the time, that just wasn't really a thing. Mm -hmm. And so they would just be like, never girl, like, <laughs> be content here, like, and enjoy your summers. And so finally it happened, we were like, supposed to be moving to Vegas. Mm -hmm. um, but some crazy stuff went down with like my mom's dad. He was supposed to be like hooking up this house because he was in real estate. Okay. Long story short, it falls through and we already have the house in Texas on the market. So somehow it became let's move to Compton and move in with my granny. <laughs> so now it's five of us living at my granny's house off Rosecrans and Central and just figuring it out. In the thick of it. And in the thick of it, we didn't know if we were staying, if we were gonna go back. Like, my dad was like, yo, fuck this. Like, I'm trying to go back to Texas. Like, what's going on? And we ended up staying here. And so I ended up going to um, King Drew for high school, which is a medical magnet school. And uh -huh. at the time, you know, my mom felt like it was the best option in the area. You know, we got Centennial, Locke, like, you know, just all these things. She was like, well, your cousins go to King Drew and they were going to be doctors. So that's what you need to do. <laughs> so I grew up, you know, my family was like, you need to be the first doctor in the family. So okay. I thought I wanted to be a pediatrician. Mm. Okay. And I was, you know, going through the motions and I was good at math and science. So I was like, okay, cool. Like, this doesn't seem so bad. Mm -hmm. But at my high school, we had a hospital program with um, the Martin Luther King Hospital. This is before it got renovated and it's like all fancy now. Okay. It used to be a very different environment yeah. um, to the point where it got like shut down. <laughs> and so we like every once a week we got to go there and volunteer. So I got to shadow like a pediatrician and I quickly realized that that was not <laughs> what I wanted You're to like, do. Cool. I was like, I don't want to be around these sick kids all day. Like, <laughs> I don't care about these diseases. It was just too much. Yeah. I'm like, this is not interesting to me. And so I thought at that point that I wanted to go into education because at the time I was starting to like visit colleges and I was just really frustrated that I wasn't seeing a lot of black people mm -hmm. in those spaces. And I was like, hmm, you know, I really like school. Like I would love to come back to my high school and teach English. Um, so I ended up going to USC for undergrad, was an English creative writing major. Um, and through that process, I'm like volunteering at high schools and realizing I'm like, these kids don't care about what I'm talking about. <laughs> I'm in here trying to talk about college and the FAFSA. And I remember somebody raised their hand for a question. I'm thinking they're going to ask about financial aid. And they're like, yo, are the parties at college really that good if they look at the movies? And I was like, yo, that's a really interesting question to ask right now. But also it made me realize, I'm like, yo, media is more impactful on our minds and on our perceptions of things mm. than anything that's happening in the classroom, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. So I was like, you know, maybe I can be an educator, but through media. Mm. And I just happened to be at USC, which has a pop and film school. So yep. I went, got my minor in screenwriting, loved it. Was like up till four o'clock in the morning happily writing scripts like it was just amazing and so i ended up staying for grad school got my master's in professional writing 
And then after that, I thought, like, oh, okay, like, I'm fresh out of USC film school. Like, I'm about to be Issa Rae, you know? Everybody's going to be calling me, like, oh, yeah, girl, we want to give you a show. And that is not at all how it works. <laughs> and so I was like, oh, damn. Like, okay, I got to, like, meet people in Hollywood. I don't know nobody in Hollywood. And, and speaking of that, me and Micaiah met because we were pitching. Uh, who was it? Me and Mike Sager were pitching the... Jen. Jen. Yeah, yeah, yep. yeah. We were we were pitching a show to Macro, and our relationship developed from there, spawned from mm-hmm. there, and just stayed in touch and whatever. But anyway, go back to yes. I just well, that's a perfect segue because I ended up right after grad school, I ended up interning at a production company called Macro. It was brand new at the mm-hmm. time. I saw the announcement of Deadline, and I was just like, oh, this sounds like exactly yeah. what I want to do. I want to make content for my people. Mm-hmm. And this is just starting, like, let me just see if I can get in here and work for free. So I was actually their first intern hire, summer 2015. Um, and I just wanted to understand how it worked. But once I got in there, one, I realized I really enjoyed development. Like, mm-hmm. and just the process of, like, taking an idea from, like, a sentence and turning it into, like, a whole thing. Mm-hmm. I just really enjoyed it. And so I started doing that, worked my way up, like, was an assistant for a few years. Ended up, you know, assisting Charles and then got promoted off of his desk to creative executive. Um, and I feel like that's around the time where we met. I was probably like a fresh, you know, junior exec, like ready was, to like make something She was in there check. ready, yeah. <laughs> she was like, we gonna make this happen. I like this idea. And she was very, you were very communicative. You know, you, you like communicated really well and you need someone in, in places like that, especially me, I'm like a novice. The people around me, surrounding me were way more seasoned. This was my first opportunity to be in a room and in a steam room. Charles King and Macro and uh, yourself and it, it, you need you need um, you need to feel like you're being advocated in the rooms that you walk in. Yeah. And that's 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 her energy from the yeah. jump. You know? so, yeah. yeah. Even if it's not gonna necessarily end up there or work out there, mm-hmm. she was just like I was gonna try. She was gonna and try I was gonna fight. And she was, <laughs> yeah. To make it happen. But it's Real. like I feel like that fight came from I initially, you know, and still want to, I'm like, I'm a writer, Mm -hmm. you know, but I decided to take an executive path and learn how to produce because I saw how few advocates we had in those rooms. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, well, if I'm a writer, if I'm just like this baby writer out here, who's going to fight for me if there's nobody in the room? I'm like, let me become the person in the room so that I can then advocate for myself and my community when it's time. Because I I just didn't see nobody doing that, you know, that looked like me. You, uh, Lexi, you Mm -hmm. earlier, you spoke to uh, this this sort of the same thing, you know, going to seeing the Lion King. Mm -hmm. But that was the first time you said you saw a production of that size and it Mm -hmm. was all of us. And you were like, oh, I can do this. Yeah. How how important is 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 representation? Mm -hmm. It's so important. I mean, we hear it all the time. Representation matters. But. It's like, what does that actually look like? Mm -hmm. Representation matters in every single space. I think that it's really important that, you know, the representation in front of the screen is is great, but we were having this conversation earlier, just making sure that the representation is also behind Mm -hmm. the scenes as well, because that's, in my opinion, where it really matters, especially if we're telling black and brown stories. We need to make sure that we are the ones telling our own stories. And then also, then we were also having this conversation as well when you were talking about a different world Mm -hmm. and how um, a different world, just seeing that representation, it impacted way more black people, black kids to go to HBCUs. And that just goes to show like, when you see yourself reflected in a space and you you see yourself just existing Mm -hmm. without trauma attached, without a story about slavery, without a story about you know, segregation, when, when you see it's just like being able to exist and yeah. be, and just be happy and be smart and be cool, all the stories that we get to <clears> see our white, counterpart, our white counterparts have, it makes us encouraged and it makes us feel like, dang, like we could do this too. It yeah. makes us inspired, it makes us inspired to go to school, it makes us inspired to go chase our dreams, it makes us inspired to, you know, start our own production companies. Right. When we see people like Issa Rae, when we see people like you, when we see people like, you know. Like uh, you. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, but when you yeah. see when you see people in those spaces, it, it makes you feel as though like I can do that too. But I think that when you finally get to that space, it's also important to create more opportunities for people that 
you know, started off like you. Yeah. Because yeah. W when you have that power now, you can't just like be the only one and continue to go along with what we've seen Hollywood go along with for so long. Mm -hmm. Because we already know that there are only a few of us that are allowed into this space. So when you are allowed into it, you have to make sure that you're like creating the same opportunities for other people. So as well. you recently, um, Showtime, mm -hmm. uh, First Lady? Yeah. Viola Davis. Yes. Yeah. So you around, <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Someone who has created that for herself. Mm -hmm. I, I, I've, uh, I'm actually right now talking to Julius and those people at Juvie Productions mm -hmm. yeah. about something. So again, from an inspiration standpoint, mm -hmm. how big is it? You know, you're first you're on set with, she is amazing. She's incredible, yeah. Every day. Mm -hmm. How does that, uh, what kind of, uh, what kind of uh, uh, inspiration or how, what are certain things that have rubbed off on you mm -hmm. while being on set with her? Yeah, I mean, Miss Viola, like she's so, before I even knew her, like she was one of the like number one people that I looked up to. Okay. And the thing about after working with her and being in that space with her that I admired so much, um, I admired how she was able to take control as a producer and as an actor and to make sure that she protected her character, making sure that she protected Michelle Obama's story. Mm -hmm. um, and oftentimes, as black women, period, we're made to feel as though we can't really have a voice or speak up. Um, even if we're in that position of power, still it's like, mm -hmm. okay, I have to be timid, I have to be careful with the words that I use. But seeing her in that space be able to be so vocal and take control of that set and take control of that story, but in a way which was also like, kind I've, I've just mm -hmm. never seen a black woman be able to navigate something like that before and mm -hmm. and to me it just made me feel so inspired because it was like dang like if i have a question if there's something that doesn't feel right in the script i shouldn't like be made to feel like i can't speak up about it yeah. because at the end of the day i know my character more than anybody else on the set does like yeah, yeah you wrote this character you wrote these these lines but i'm helping bring this character character to life so if i have an idea I shouldn't feel timid or afraid to be able to speak up and say that. Mm -hmm. um, and then also, like, being around her every day was just like, it was like a master class. Her and also um, Kerry Washington as well, like, those two women, like, they inspired me so much just by being in their element, in their orbit. Like, one of the things that, like, stood out to me about Kerry was the fact that, like, she was able to navigate being a producer, an actor, but also a mother and a friend and a boss. And she showed up every single day on set with this energy mm. that I aspire to have every time I step into a room, no matter if it's 6 a.m. or if it is 3 a.m. and you know, you're know you having the worst day ever, the fact that you can walk into a space and make everybody feel comfortable and make everybody feel seen and heard is something that not a lot of people can do, especially when you're at that level. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So to me, like that was the biggest thing where it was just like, stay humble, like make sure that yeah. you know, you're- Leadership. Leadership, That's yeah. That's real leadership. Also integrity yeah. for yourself. Exactly. Because even though you are showing up and you're working I think people forget on and off the camera, yeah. you still have to hold yourself to a standard yeah. and your encounters with people are what people remember, right? Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like when what you leave them. Yeah, with. when somebody yeah. passes yeah. away, nobody ever goes up there and be like, yo, they had the illest shoes. Mm -hmm. They right. like, right. this is how somebody made me feel when yeah. they stepped into a building, mm -hmm. you know? But, um, you know, just talking about like, we're talking about Hollywood and, and film and television. How does Hollywood, black creatives, tell other stories besides the trauma? How do we get to the point where we're celebrating the family? We're mm -hmm. celebrating, you know, black parents and we're celebrating the triumphs as opposed to like, mm -hmm. you, you watch Hollywood and you watch a lot of films and they're steeped in our traumas. Yeah. And I feel like there's such a huge void that can be filled because not everybody was missing their dad or missing their mom or their, you know, me and your mother were talking about yeah. when their parents were drug addicts. Yeah. But we've, we continuously let other people tell our stories and that story is steeped in trauma to the point where when we have the opportunity to tell our story, that's still our story. Ooh. Yeah. yeah, go ahead. Yeah, yeah. yeah, go ahead. We're talking about that. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. Oh my, I feel like that's such, um, a loaded question. And I feel like first, 
I really do want to take time to recognize the artists, the black artists, who are telling new stories. Okay. Yes. Because I think, you know, we are living in a hyper, just, I don't know, content world right now where there's mm -hmm. so much coming at us. And sometimes it does feel, and it's true that, you know, certain stories get more marketing and more support and a bigger budget and all that stuff. And there's some amazing work happening on the margins. Like there's a lot of independent films happening. There's mm -hmm. like people, you know, learning how to make stuff on social media and then turning that into 30 minute episodes. Like it's so much stuff happening at the margins. I think the issue is when we think of like these traditional platforms, yeah. mm -hmm. we see, you know, what gets prioritized and who's getting cast and you know, what those stories are giving. And a lot of times it can be luster comma lack, you know, like mm -hmm. it's just not, Satisfying, we have to ask, like, who is this for? At a certain point, when we've seen, I'll never forget, I feel like when the, I, what I call like the most recent era of like, you know, slave narrative movies started pressing. I don't know if it was um, 12 years mm -hmm. or I forget what, what like ushered it in, but then it just yeah. felt like every year after that, it was like back to back to yeah. back to back mm -hmm. to back. I think it really comes down to who's financing. Yeah. these things. Mm -hmm. It costs a lot of money to make TV and to make movies. A lot of times it's yeah. like multi-million dollars. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like it's, it's a lot. And so I think a lot of these people who are financing are white men, you know, who have their own preoccupation with our suffering and with like the just certain aspects of history and they feel like that's what I don't know sometimes I feel like is this motivated by white guilt? Like, you know, that you're mm -hmm. just like, oh, I have to tell this story. I don't know what it is. Yeah. Um, but there's that, you know what I mean? I think there's a lot of us who are eager and ready to do other things, but we go into these rooms and we hear no. Or it's like, oh, can you do this for $5? Mm -hmm. And it's like, no, <laughs> you know yeah. what I mean? I need a real budget. Yeah. Yeah. Why, when we come in, you wanna give us the lowest budget possible, and give us no marketing dollars, and then you're like, see, we tried to make a show about something else, but it flopped. Yeah. Well, yeah, because you didn't support it. Right. Yeah. And you didn't equip the creatives. You went and hired creatives who had no experience and then expected them to be able to deliver with no guidance and no everything and half of what you give these other projects. Sounds a lot like all the creative businesses, right. whether it be the music industry right mm -hmm. now, Oof. whether it be, uh, again, filmmaking, whether it be uh, black creatives on, on social media now. Now it's like, now we have another gatekeeper. It's called the algorithm. Mm -hmm. Man. And the algorithm yeah. is yep. crazy. <laughs> right. It runs a little different yeah. for, for yeah. us. We've like, yeah. we're, again, it's, it's that thing of like, it's the shell game. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Or like you said, the goalpost keeps moving. Like, okay, yeah. I thought this was it. I thought this is what you said. If I did these things, you know, yes. I, I, uh, I'd have a shot, but yes. it's, it's, it's shocking to me. It, 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 what's funny is like even with um, uh, The Woman King, mm -hmm. Viola's film, right? Yeah. I remember I was going to go see the film and I looked at how many screens it was on. Just uh, I, It wasn't even a thing. I just was like, mm -hmm. okay, because I saw another movie had come out. I think it was a, um, it was a Marvel comic film, mm -hmm. right? At the same time, I want to say. And then her film was coming out. And there was obviously it was, you know, it was getting a push a bit, but I was like, yo, this film is on <laughs> 30 screens, like back to back, back to back. Here's the times. And then hers was like, okay, from the matinee till 730 mm -hmm. was the cutoff time where the other film was up till you could see it up until like midnight. Yeah. And yeah. it was on a lot more screens, you know? Yeah. Um, and then it's also what they want to put in front of us. It's like, what do you want to put on the radio? Oh, you want to put this record on the radio, mm -hmm. but we can't get a JID record on the radio or Earth Gang record on the radio. Can't get a Snow Allegra record on the radio. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? But yeah. we can get what we've, what, you know, what they want to give us yeah. and what will keep um, certain situations happening. We will, we will keep looking at the front page of newspapers or on your 10 minute ticker or mm -hmm. on your iPhone and see, you know, uh, the genocide that's happening in our communities because th those are the only drums that are being beaten right yeah. now. Yeah. Um, how do you, we, we've talked about this off the air because um, you're, 
You're about to go make a trip, actually, yeah. out of the country. Yeah. Um, Where are you going? I'm yeah. going to Ghana. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I leave pleasure, on Monday. Pleasure, pleasure, or pleasure, spiritual journey. Like my, I'm turning 31 in January, and I've just Ghana has been on my heart for years, mm. for years and years and years. Like I did my little ancestry test. It popped up. I have, I've had ancestors do the same, and Ghana was like, you know, where they spent time. Maya Angelou is actually like my cousin, and yes, and she oh, like wow. lived there for a time. And so yeah. I've always just been like, I feel like I need to have that experience. So I'm gifting myself this for my birthday. That's it's amazing. So dope. Congratulations. Yeah. With Masterclass, you can learn from the world's best artists, icons, and leaders anytime, anywhere, and at your own pace. You can learn the art of negotiation from Chris Voss or learn how to improve your business strategy skills from one of my personal favorites, Bob Iger. With over 180 classes from a range of world-class instructors, that thing you've always wanted to do is a lot closer than you think. I recently checked out the Duffer Brothers class on developing an original TV series. I've always dreamed about creating a hit show, and this class delivered me the foundation to be well on my way. One of the more fascinating parts of the class was learning to conceive the idea of the show. Because it's not necessary to sit down and consume a full class from start to finish, sharing insights from individual lessons or what you were able to learn in 10 minutes is great also. I highly recommend you check it out. This holiday, give the perfect gift of an annual Masterclass membership and get one free. Go to masterclass.com slash ASL today. That's masterclass.com slash ASL today. Terms apply. In a creative space, where do you find yourself the most creative? Is that alone? Is that traveling? Is that Mm. At your house, do you have a, a regimen, a routine? And this is for both of you guys yeah. because, you know, I think it's, you know, for me, I'm a, I'm a pacer. Like, I, like, I don't like to sit still. I walk back and forth and random ideas here and there. <laughs> but I always love to hear, like, the creative process, you know. Um, yeah. 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 For me, I mean, I, gosh, I feel like just up until past year, I have allowed myself to like really travel and like start to like leave the country. I feel as though LA for me sometimes, like at least the industry aspect, it can feel like really suffocating. Yes. Um, and I feel as though I've just spent a lot of time here kind of like in my room trying to like gain ideas from like kind of like being in a box mm -hmm. space. Um, but by actually going out and seeing the rest of the world and having new experiences and hearing new stories and talking to new people, like that is where I find like the most, my best creative ideas like come about. And I think it's also just important to have that duality of also just allowing yourself to like be and not al like not always be in work mode. Yes. Um, because yet again, it can be very, very <laughs> suffocating. Yes. It can be. And I think that like having little things, even while you are here, like in LA, having little things like, you know, all right, Every day I'm gonna set like 20 minutes aside to meditate. Every day I'm gonna set like a certain amount of time to, to pray or to do something that fulfills my spirit outside mm. of just constantly being in a headspace of work, 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 work. Yeah. And I feel like for, for me doing that, taking the time out of my day, just that small amount of time to just be and to like really tap into myself yeah. and not tap into all the other energies around me, like that is really what keeps me sane. Um, but in 2023, like my main goal is to like just travel as much as possible because like the experiences that I've had so far are just like unmatched and completely life changing. Yes, yeah, I, love I love that. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, travel is where it's at. Mm -hmm. It's where it's at. There's something about LA for me too, and I mean, I grew up here, so I don't want to talk shit about LA, but. <laughs> I don't the know, the energy different. be weird, yeah. and it's not, it's not it's different because right now. Yeah. of us natives, you know, it's just something that goes on with, like, the transplant energy, and just, mm -hmm. like, I think all of the hopes and aspirations and superficial things that permeates, like, you know, the people's psyche here, it's just yeah. very strange. So, for me, like, same, mm -hmm. I've been, I'm calling this year my year of freedom, yeah. I left my job, and I was just like, yo, I need to connect with me, I need to figure out what I like, what... I actually enjoy doing because I was feeling similarly. I'm like, I work in a creative job and yet I'm burnt out and frustrated right. and like, I'm like, this doesn't feel mm -hmm. fun right. a lot of time. And yeah. I was like, I don't like that. It needs to be fun. 
So yeah, like I remember I went to like Austin City Limits by myself. That's like a huge motivation why I'm going to Ghana. Like I feel more alive when I'm out. You went to ACL by yourself? I did. And it was That's everything. Crazy. Yo, ACL. It was everything. That's dope. ACL is a dope festival. It's, it was my first time going, and I loved it. I would definitely be back. I met some really cool friends. I'm like, it was dope. <laughs> um, but yeah, and I also really enjoy being with, being in community with other artsy people. Mm-hmm. It's just the best. Like, I love those late nights where we're just like up singing, like making songs, yeah. just like playing around, just allowing ourselves to be goofy. Like, mm-hmm. I always feel my most creative, like, after that. That's what's up. That's dope. That's really dope. Uh, all the, um, you know, the projects and things you've been a part of, like, what are, you know, a couple that, you know, obviously you coming off of any Lizzo doc, what are some projects that just were like, you look back and you're like, wow, I can't believe, not I can't believe, but like, I was a part of that. I was. Ooh, yeah. That's a good question. I mean, I will say, I think so, in terms of the Big Girl Show, I didn't work on the documentary that sure. just came out, but the Big Girl Show, mm-hmm. like, that's 100% was my baby. I am the most proud of what I was able to accomplish in such a short amount of time. It was actually my first time working in Unscripted. I had never worked in Unscripted before. It was my first time actually like being an executive producer on a project. Like I've been a part of a lot of stuff, but that just to like challenge myself and to figure it out and to acknowledge like, I've never done this before, but we're gonna get it done, you know? Like, and most importantly, impacting the girls, you know? Mm -hmm. And just like being able to hand select them and like, take care of them once they were here, help them build their confidence and then see that pay off in real life. Like to me, that was just so rewarding. Um, Another project I'm really, really proud of is Mo on Netflix. I don't know if y'all checked it out, but Mo Amber, like amazing, amazing comedian and just human being. Um, But when I was working at Netflix, I was an exec on that show and helped develop it. And like his story is so just fascinating, hilarious, like, it's so many things, and I feel like the show really captured his energy, which is hard to do, you know, with a story like that and, like, mm-hmm. in a place like Netflix, I feel like it's really hard to, like, get that type of story told. So the fact that it happened and yeah. it's good, I'm just like, what? I, I watched the whole thing in, like, three days. <laughs> wow, and, yeah, yes. I loved it. Um, just, just, like, so many amazing things, like, to be a part of. And do you feel like Unscripted is a place you would like to be more in? Ooh, definitely. I think there's a wide open space. I think there's a wide open space. I really see myself, I like Unscripted a lot because you get to actually impact people, like real people. Um, So in a perfect world, I'm like, I would love to build out like my Unscripted empire and just like have that feed me. And then that can finance, you know, me as I get, you know, really going in like the scripted and like film space yeah. um, because it's just easy. It's quick. We shot that show in like five weeks, <laughs> like, which is crazy. That was not enough time, but we got it done. It's just yeah. so fast. So I like, you know, being able to like get in and get out and um, so that I can like open up some brain space to focus on like the scripted stuff. Oh, so. Yeah. So. What about you? You've been a part of yeah. like some amazing things and yeah. so young in your career, but like what are some, some moments and, and things that have stood out to you that make you be like, wow, this is, you know, that moment yeah. of reflection, like I'm doing this. Yeah. I mean, I think for me, like the first thing was Little Fires Everywhere. Like that's probably mm-hmm. like, that still remains, I think my, like that's the project that I'm like proudest of. Um, I feel as though it was just something something new was like sparked in me when when I uh, first read the script and then when I like took on that role like I feel like that project in general was just like a lot of self-discovery was Mm -hmm. was made throughout also just like playing that character like there were a lot of things that I learned about myself through the role of Pearl so for me like that is that forever will be like just my top top thing but then also I would say first lady as well because um, something that I was super shocked when like the audition first came in for me like this was the first time that we've heard the Obama stories but this was the first time that Millie and Sasha were actually a part of a story of theirs being told so like this was the first time that anyone was playing Malia and the first time anyone was playing Sasha and so for me I felt as though that was a big responsibility because we 
know, we don't know everything about the Obamas, but we, we know quite a lot. We see, we hear what's happening in their day-to-day -day lives, but we don't get to hear, like, from Malia, we don't get to hear from Sasha what it meant to them to be the daughters of, you know, the, the president. And so, for me, when I first read the script, and to, like, really understand Malia's perspective, it, it took me back because she was one of the most vocal ones in that house. Like, a lot of the reasons why those things happened in that house was because of Malia. Yeah. And so for me okay. to wow. be able to read that and, like, be like, wow, like, this is the first time that anyone's learning that the fact that, like, gay rights, that he, he passed the gay rights bill because Malia told him, no, this is something that you should do. Like, that's the first time that anybody is hearing this. Like, that's so, that's some powerful stuff. Yeah. And so it was... It was definitely like something that I, I studied. I studied for months and it was something that, yet again, I didn't know that I had in me because it was also my first time playing someone who was actually real. Mm -hmm. And then you had the element of like, this person is still alive. And then this yeah. person is yeah. also like a part of one of the most loved families in the world. <laughs> yeah. that's a lot. So that's a, like, that's a lot. Just a little bit of pressure. Right. 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 A little bit. A little bit. Yeah, so it was a lot, but um, all in all, like, like I said, I'm so grateful like that I had somebody like Miss Viola like by my side because honestly, without her, I I don't know how I would have been able to like truly navigate it um, because she she spoke up not only just for Miss Michelle but she also spoke up for Malia, for Sasha, for Miss Barack, and so without her like really helping us understand the authentic the authenticity of like where they actually come from, who they are behind the scenes, who they are when you strip down you know, just the, the titles of being president and, and first lady, who they actually genuinely are, like, that that meant the world to us. And I feel like me and Sanaya, who played Sasha, like, without that, we wouldn't have been able to have the performances that we did. So those two, like, really, really stand out to me. So yeah. you've been a part of, you've been a part of two things now that where women have really advocated, because Reese mm -hmm. Witherspoon yeah. is the executive producer. Yeah, of Little Fires. Yeah. Yes. Um, how important is that for you guys? Like, how is yeah. how, women, like, not only women of color, but just women, period, mm -hmm. galvanizing, you know, yeah. and, and getting behind the cameras and getting in these rooms that they weren't, you know, and having their voices really, really heard. Because yeah. I love watching it. I love what Regina King's doing. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. Regina's so a beast, you know, yeah. I'm calling it, but Regina's yeah. a beast. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, in terms of, her work, like the things that she's doing, but what is, is that sort of the path also for you guys too? Like mm -hmm. to, you wanna, you wanna, you wanna kind of go that way? No, absolutely. I remember the first time that I actually like became inspired to also, um, to wanna be on the producing and directing side. It was actually through Regina. I, I did a guest star role on Good Doctor when I was like, 13, 14, and she was directing. Mm -hmm. um, and it was the first time that I had been directed by a black woman. Um, first of all, I had already just like admired her work for so long, so I was like, oh my gosh, like that's Regina King. Um, but then like, <laughs> but then like also just being on set with her and like my character, what my character was going through, it was just, it was a lot. And to be like 13 at the time, I was like, oh my God, like this is, this is a lot. But the moment that I met her, like she was immediately like, let's like let's go out like let's sit down like let's let's talk about this and seeing her on set being able to be um an actor's director which i think is super important yeah. um because there there there's a difference between just a director who's just there to do their job and who's just in their own world and then a director who's there for everybody mm. and who sees it as um a collaboration mm. and so that was the first time where i was like wow this is like this is a collaboration and i felt as though like i was really seen by a director wow. um and so in that moment um you know i, I shadowed her i i studied her and and i was like i want to do that too when i get to that point i want to be able to be a successful actor and be a successful director and also just be able to advocate for the people on set especially for the black people on set behind the scenes as well while also holding that position of power and being able to be in front of the, the camera um, and so like a couple years later I actually started my own production company at the age of 15 it's called yes. Ultimate Dreamer Productions thank you um, <laughs> but even with that it's it's been a journey and so every set I'm on I'm still like constantly trying to like shadow people and I feel like I've been so fortunate of the fact that the people that I've been on set with have all really been women like I've had such great examples of strong women that are in positions that I strive to be in mm -hmm. um, and so to be able to see like the one thing about all of them that I've admired so much is 
the spirit of grace that they have and just like they just know like they have just made working with women in my opinion have, has just made like my experience on set 10 times better and like it's crazy to say but like there just definitely is a difference when you have male producers also white male producers white male mm -hmm. directors versus women that like actually have your back that actually like will make sure that oh there's a um you know there's an intimacy coordinator on set making yeah. sure that you feel comfortable yeah. making yeah. sure that you know you feel heard at all times because that's something that a lot of people like don't get so mm -hmm. i feel really fortunate of of the fact that i've been able to work with so many women and it's inspired me because like now i know the type of producer director and actor that i want to be when, yeah. when i continue is there that's a beautiful is there a yeah. story that maybe the masses don't know, but mm -hmm. that you're aware of? Is there something, is it, or do you even want to give that away? Is there a story you want to tell? There is. I was just thinking as you were talking, because I was just like, I feel like right now there's so much talk around, you know, women being in positions of power. And that's true. I think that's important. I feel fortunate. I've had some, you know, really great um, women bosses. I've had some not so great, you know, mm -hmm. women bosses. Like I've had, I think, both, I've had a, a number of experiences. And one thing that stuck out to me is like, it's not only about being a woman in a position of power, but like actively using your position of power to help other people mm -hmm. who are being marginalized in that space. Because sometimes I've walked into a space and I see all these women and I'm like, oh, perfect. But then I get in a meeting and I realize like, oh, y'all actually now y'all are just in an oppressor's chair and it's great for representation, but you're not actually helping to advance this cause over mm. here. And so that's been like very disappointing and like heartbreaking for me to experience. Mm. And I've been in rooms like a story I'm really interested in telling is just when I love when men and when, you know, other folks step up and use their voice to advocate for me. Like, I will never, ever, ever forget. I worked on Judas and the Black Messiah. Ryan Coogler was a producer on that movie. At the time, I was an assistant, and I was working tirelessly on this project, and everybody knew that. He literally called and was like, so from now on, on the notes, I want everyone to write their initials next to their note, and everyone who's contributing to these notes needs to be in the meetings because what was happening is you know we all i'm, I'm yeah. typing up all the notes but then i'm on my assistant desk so he's like no everyone who's writing the notes is now in the meeting so now here i am in this meeting getting to back up my notes and explain my point of view and it just completely changed the dynamic of my role on the project and led to me being able to get an associate producer credit on that movie. That would have never happened had Ryan Coogler not advocated. Yeah. You know yeah. what I'm saying? And I will just never, ever, ever forget that. And I'm like, yes, it's. I feel like women in these positions, we need to not only just be there, but be advocating. Mm -hmm. And so does everybody else. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. And I love to hear that. That's, that's, that, that's dope because right now we're hearing like black men, black women, there's like this separation happening. Mm -hmm. No, this black man, who didn't have to advocate it for you, and you got an associate producer credit. On an Oscar nominated well, film. Oscar nominated now I'm able film. to say that. I, I would have just been like looking at the credits like, and I also got to shout out my best friend, Mark. He also, cause I remember after I left Macro, there's only, people start acting really weird when it's time to do the credits on a movie. Mm -hmm. So they were like, oh, we can only have so many associate producer credits. I've heard and this. And he worked, Mark worked tirelessly on that film right alongside me, and when I left, he was on set. He literally forwent his credit so that I could get my credit. Wow. wow. And he said, we're not taking Makai's name off this film. If that means I can't get a credit, then so be it. Wow. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, what? that, you know, I'm like, that is solidarity. Yeah. You know, and it sucks that he couldn't also get a credit. He deserves the credit on that movie. We both did. But because yeah. of, you know what I mean? Sometimes it really be like that. And people have to say, no, I'm going to stand up for this even at my own, even if I don't get the game. It's, yeah. it's yeah. crazy that... I mean, and this is just the history of the world that it is so hard for people to give credit to people that deserve the damn credit. Yo. <laughs> like, yo, it yo. is. Yo. <laughs> Think about Can it. I get my credit? Credit? <laughs> like, you did, you put in the work, you put in the hours, you put in the contribution, and then you still have to fight for that and that and that's this is what makes it so hard for people to get to the next step or to tell their story because 
we have such a hard time advocating for people because we're afraid there's not enough. Mm -hmm. There's plenty. There's plenty. Yep. There's plenty. There's plenty money. <laughs> right. plenty. There's plenty opportunities. There's plenty of stories to be told. But if somebody is right there with you and putting in the work, advocate for that. Yes. Advocate for it. It doesn't yeah. matter what race, creed, color, what they exactly. if they contributed. Acknowledge, yeah. Acknowledge that. it. Acknowledge it. And who Acknowledge is that hurting? It. And because it, credits be long as hell anyway. Right. Nobody stays to watch that. They ain't gonna kill nobody. <laughs> and, the, right. and the other thing is like, you doing that helps that person keep on. Helps them keep on. Mm -hmm. You're either going to help them keep on or what you do in, 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 in afflict, inflicts them in such a way that they don't want to, they're like, yo, I'm, I'm good. I don't, I don't want to do this anymore. I've never gotten my due. You know what I mean? Yeah. I've been stepped on, I've been overlooked, and I've given and given and given. Yeah. So the moment that someone just says, hey, come on. We got to do more of that, especially when someone is deserving. Look, I get it that sometimes we're all jaded by our past experiences, right? Mm -hmm. We are. We're jaded. If you've, you, you, we talked about <laughs> yeah. this. So if you've, been, if you've been burned, so to speak, you're like, yo, I'm, I'm not doing that again. Uh, I, I can't. I got to keep you here until I see. Yeah. But ultimately, that kind of, that kind of energy it stifles everybody. Everything. It stifles yeah. everything. It changes the whole, <clears throat> the whole energy dynamic. Yeah. Yeah. And if you don't believe that it, it changes the room, you're tripping. So yeah. again, we have to, and, it, and it's, it's something that we're all, we all have to work at. We all have to work at, because we are, again, we are all, we've, we all walk in the room with trauma in some capacity. Right. But you have to be able to look at real intent, especially whoever you're dealing with, right? If there's a specific, yeah. like, let me look at, you know what? I'm tripping. Let me get over me. Let me take some time for me. Mm -hmm. And then let me, let's keep, let's keep going. Yeah. Like we got it. We got to have more of that. Cause if not, the things that we're hoping to see take place in our industries, yeah. they're not going to take place. Mm -hmm. Because it's built also to keep us separated. Yeah. If you got your own agenda, mm -hmm. uh, she's the young black woman and the older generation <laughs> black woman okay. don't get it. Yeah. And then this person don't, yeah. you know, don't like this person because he's not relevant anymore. And you're not saying <laughs> enough for our causes. Yeah, and you yeah. over here just, you know what I mean? Like, we just stay like this. And so if they got the same thing, and yeah. we're, yes, it's just yeah. through different lenses. It's just yeah. through different lenses. We, we got to have conversations. We are our biggest issue, you know what I mean? And it's just because we don't take the time to one listen to each other because we're steadily trying to climb on each other's back to get to the next thing, and we just have to slow down and, and look at people as individuals, you know. Um, yeah. And not everybody has the the strength within them to, you get knocked down six times, you get up the seven times. Some people get knocked down twice and they're like, I can't do this. I'm going, I'm out, I'm you know out. I mean? And sometimes if you extend that olive branch, you might help somebody get to the next thing. So we just have to do more of that because our people, we're the most talented. It don't, I don't care what nobody say. We <laughs> have the most talent across the board. It's, 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 yes. it's, it's, you know, and, and, the entertainment industry is built on the backs of us. You know what I mean? Yeah. And we can't we can't cut ourselves short anymore. We have to learn how to again wrap ourselves around wrap our arms around each other. And that doesn't always look like, you know, this person didn't give me a hundred thousand dollars or this person this person might have introduced you to, you know, somebody that helped to change your life, you know? We can't be such closed doors with each other because we're so worried about like, oh, uh, if I do that, then they gonna get the opportunity. Right. Listen, right. and and and, and, <laughs> the, be and then yeah. the beautiful thing about that is, or the bad, the, the 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 not so good thing about that thought process is, is well, I'm not gonna let him in the door. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Maybe that person that you allow in the door, is the beacon of light that needs to go through the yeah. door. Because that's what he does really well, or she does really, you know what I mean? Whatever needs it. And then they're like, hey, thank you for introducing me to that person. You know, that made you look, 
hey, why don't you have this role? And that person still gets what they needed and you get what you needed. And the, the overall project is benefits from all from those both of those contributions yeah. and that's the space that we got to get to yeah. if we do not get to that space then we are going to be having these conversations 15 and 20 years from now i can't do it i really can't do it no I just yeah. can't. Like, it's too much it's too much it's we've too been having much. the same conversation for too long and yeah. i'm honestly past the point i'm like i'm over opening somebody else's door and then be like, oh, come on, y'all, fuck that. I'm like, we need to build our own yes. door, our own yeah. infrastructure, our own everything. And I've been having a hard time figuring out how does that happen within a capitalist yeah. structure? How do we do that here when our whole lives it's been like, you need to go get yours. But then what we really need to be doing is thinking about the collective and, you know, just operating in a to totally different energy and it's just, I feel like it's so hard to like even have those conversations here because everybody's just like, well, I'm building my empire. I'm right. getting my company. <laughs> Good luck. I might have a little $500 yeah. for you, but like, yeah. I'm yeah. over here. But it's like, but what about the, the infrastructure yeah. so that we don't have to keep doing this? Yeah, well, I think it just comes down to we're, we're not taught how to, you know what I mean? We're taught when you get yours, that's yours. Yeah. I mean, divide yeah. and conquer yeah. from you know? the beginning. Yeah. So that's why everybody is the way that they are. Yeah. But these yeah. these are the powerful conversations. And you talk about like algorithm and all those things. These are the conversations mm -hmm. that take a little bit longer to hit people because we're not talking shit about so-and-so right. right. and like those kind of things. People don't, that ain't as alluring as you saying like, <laughs> oh, I was working on the set with this girl and she, she trashed, like, you know what I mean? Right. Yeah. Right, you know, yeah, Lexi ain't on here that's, being like, you know, Viola. Right, that's, 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 that was the energy you already know. Oh, we yeah. out of here. You already know. We, already we know, know we got them stories right. too, but it's like, yeah. what's but the point? Not, right. That's not right. what It's why, just why, detrimental what? to, yeah. you know, us, you know, Ooh. and we got to mm -hmm. figure out, it, it's the long road, but I'm committed to having these conversations and we're committed to this platform for those reasons and why we want to sit down with people that, First of all, we, we, we want, only want to sit down with people who respect and admire because it's not about somebody doing a press junket. Mm -hmm. You know, when we talk, I wasn't like, hey, when's your movie coming out? We should <laughs> shoot it around, yeah. around that. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, yeah. it's, it's like we want to sit mm -hmm. down and these are powerful conversations that we, again, must have. And advocacy is at the, the forefront of this platform. You know, again, so we just thank you guys for for coming on and being a part of this you know but um just to switch up the speed a little bit i'm i'm curious with you guys being tv film what are some of your favorite films you know from the beginning of time to now to you know Ooh. That's a loaded it's question. A hard question. It's not a loaded question. <laughs> not, so not, listen, not favorite right. film. Yeah, right. I'm not asking yeah. you like the favorite favorite mm -hmm. film that you've been in, but just what you like. Like, yeah, what? I mean, give us gosh, three. Give us I three. Like three. Mm. Thirty-three. No. <laughs> <laughs> More like thirty-three. I would say like. One that's coming to mind, definitely like I don't know why. It's Love Jones, like has yes. always had an impact on me. Like it's just really it's a classic. It's my mom's favorite movie. Like <laughs> the soundtrack, like everything about that movie is just so much. I'm so in love with the cinematography in that. Like the shots are just beautiful in that movie. So I would definitely say Love Jones. Um, oh gosh, <sighs> Fences. I I always go back to a lot. Um, just to like. Mm. I go I go back to fences a lot um, to kind of just like study. I really study Viola's performance, mm -hmm. but I don't know. Like after like watching it so many times, I've genuinely like just fallen in love with that movie. It's yeah. the same thing, but like for me, the acting is what stands out the most in that movie. Like it's just so unmatched. I've never seen actors, you know, like take on characters like that and then be able to bring like an iconic iconic story that we all know like to life in, in that way, especially Viola to like take that character and like really make it her own. Like it's so inspiring and yeah. I just And they never left the backyard. Right. I'm just right. Saying, but you know what I mean? Yeah. It was in the house the whole yeah. movie. Yeah. Um, and then last one, I would have to say The Truman Show. Um, wow. The Truman Show is Fire. 
such a fire movie. Yes. That's a fire movie. It's a trigger There's, for me. I there, can't. Yeah, there, but there are so many like layers. To layer, it. Yeah, and yeah. it's so real to like even just society. Like when we talk about social media and just like how we feel as though we're able to have access to everyone simply because we're able to see what they're doing on a day to day basis so with like reality TV or so, something like that. It's just so crazy to see like how. That was a film that was made in the 90s, and it's so real to what we're now. going through now. So yeah. definitely those those are like my top three. That's good. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. Your turn. So I always have to lead with, people be calling me for this, but I don't care. Okay. My favorite movie is definitely The Preacher's Wife. <laughs> like, okay. I love, yes. I okay. love Whitney Houston. Okay. Like, you know what I'm saying? I just grew up watching that over and over again. Mm -hmm. It's everything I love. Rom-com, got a little Christmas vibe. Mm -hmm. You know, it's just feel good. It's ridiculous. Yeah. The soundtrack goes crazy. <laughs> like, you know, I just really enjoy that movie. Um, but that's, so that's like my fun one. Okay. Um, a more recent like body of work that I just really, I really enjoyed The Heart of They Fall. Like that yeah. was just yeah. a really awesome mm. cinematic experience where I was I like, wow, like, like I haven't movie. seen anything like this yeah. of late. You know what I'm saying? That just where we can see black actors having a good time and just like mm. showing off their skills and like, but also telling a real story. And mm. like, I just really enjoyed it. Um, and then on the TV side, I'm obsessed with Michaela Cole. Um, yeah. I May Destroy You really, really, really impacted me. And I just remember watching that show. I'm like rewatching it now. It took like all this time because it was just so intense. Mm -hmm. But just rewatching it, I just feel like the level of vulnerability and just like honesty and truth that she put into that show um, and that she did it on her own terms. And I just love the backstory of her maintaining over ownership of that. Mm -hmm. And I just, I don't know, I just, everything about her, I just am obsessed with. Yeah. That's, yeah. that's dope. Cinematography. Who do you, uh, so there's a lot of, you know, there's always like, uh, every couple of years, there's a remake of a film, mm -hmm. right? <laughs> right. Yeah. You're in the film, mm -hmm. you're the star. Out of the lead actress, yeah. what what film are you remaking? And you're the you're the producer and executive producer. <laughs> of it. What film? Oh, um, Come on. Oh gosh. Oh, this is hard because I'm like not even a fan of remakes. Sometimes I I'm just like I'm such it. a big believer that like every like some things just deserve to yes. well enough. Alone. We need yeah. a new, we need new IP. I was. Love Jones? <laughs> yeah, right, Love Jones, maybe. But I feel like even that, like, I can't even touch it. Maybe um, there's this movie, I really love Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind. And yeah. maybe it's just because I would love to play Kate Winslet's character. Like, I feel like that would just be dope. But, like, a modern remake of it, also with, like, black actors instead, like, that would be fire. It doesn't need to be, like, the exact same thing, but I'm really mm -hmm. just into, like, that kind of um, yeah. that kind of vibe and style of the movie, so I feel like maybe Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind that would be a dope. Okay, one. that's okay. fun. Yeah, that's, that's dope. Really right? All right, I'm gonna just throw something crazy out there, mm -hmm. but follow me. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I think a remake of The Wiz would be really cool, but not on some like it wouldn't be the same story. I feel like it would need to be completely modernized and basically. I would want to make the Wiz basically just like chasing capitalistic dreams, but like make it this like really interesting musical that just feels like of the time right now. Mm. And it's like less like yellow brick roadie and just more like just kind of this life journey that we're all on and kind of like providing commentary on what we're actually trying to do and how it's ultimately within ourselves. I mean, that story that is fun. when you really break down the characters, that's, I mean, that's everyday life. Yes. Yeah. With people, yes, I'm remaking the Last Dragon. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Bruce Leroy. <laughs> I don't know who I'm gonna have play show enough, but uh, <laughs> now nah, I'm doing um, I'm doing uh, they already wow. remade the Wonder Years. So nah, they they, they not it's not they we not doing that. <laughs> um, wow, stand by me. Okay. Stand by me, like <clears throat> I love 
films where there's just like a bunch of friends involved. Like I love that plight, you know what I mean? Like um, when everybody's just, it's, it's, they're on a path, whether it be even, what is it? Um, oh my God, like, yeah. Like I love, I love those kind of films where it's just like, we're at the, we're at that fork in the road in our lives and knowing that these moments that we have together, cause you never know when those moments are. When your kids like, oh, we're never gonna play again. You yeah. never know when the last day you're gonna hoop with that friend again, or that's the last conversation. Not cause they, but just cause y'all go your separate ways. Like you're not going to the same school or whatever. So that film, like I, I love that film and I would love to see it like recast in a certain way and everything like mm -hmm. that. And mm -hmm. some kids again, going on a camping trip to, you know what I mean? Yeah, but it just, fun. yeah, it was, it's, it's, it's I, I love that film. Yeah. Was was something kind of like unassuming that people don't would think you're not involved. Like he talks about this guy goes camping and fishing. <laughs> I, I've never been fishing before. And um him and Jimmy Allen were like, yo, we gotta take you to Delaware to go fishing. A real talk. You know, but what what's something that you know you like to do that people would be like, Oh, this is good. This is actually really good. And I'm like so bad at myself, but I do nails. And it's so crazy because my nails are not done. And I really wanted to do them this morning. I was like, yep, yeah, I'm about to be on there with my nails. But I also really wanted to sleep in. So we're not done. <laughs> but I love doing nails. Like I have like a whole nail shop at my house. It's called Real Nigga Nails. Um, yes, we offer manicures, pedicures. I'm I know. I mean, yeah, I mean, men have come over and their like first manicures. Like I just love it. I think That's it's so dope. fun. I've been into it since I was like younger and um, yeah, I'm like low key thinking about going to nail school <laughs> to get my license. That is That's right. dope. That's that dope. Yeah. Do we get a bucket if we come there? Right. Exactly. So yeah, so I also yeah. I made this. So I've been, you know, I'm thinking about making more, but it's gonna be a very you can't buy them. You exactly have to be gifted a real mm -hmm. nigga bucket hat by a real nigga. The way you can get one. That makes sense. Fire. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That makes sense. Fire. Yes. We doing this. Yes. We doing this. I'm coming. I'm coming to the crib. Yes. Right. 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 What, 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 right. what would people be surprised to know? Um, Some you love. I would say I do tarot readings often. Ooh. And people will like hit me up. Like they'll be like, yo, like can I get a reading from you? Um, and at first I really didn't like trust myself with it until like I got a reading from someone who was like an expert at it like they knew and I was like okay like let me do the exact same prompt that they did and see if I get like the same like type of vibe if I see, get the same cards mm -hmm. and I did and like I just kept doing it on myself and then everybody else like started asking so now it's something that I do like a little bit on the side Love. I don't charge anyone but like I ask like if my friends need one or Family needs one. I'm like, all right, like I'll, I'll do it. I don't take myself too seriously though. I think it's fun, and and I'm just like into spirituality in general. Like it's cool. I love that. It's great. Okay, that makes sense. That you makes could do a doc <laughs> do a documentary on Miss Cleo. <laughs> Yo, I right. No, but wait. Wait. Can no, wait. No, wait. Right. Wait. Right. wait. But what we also should do is have Lexi mm -hmm. get with you in real nigga buckets and right. do manicures, pedicures, Yo, and tarot reading. You're getting the vibe. Yes. Like, like, imagine a nail shop where you could just go just get yes. everything done, get a little reading, right. little pampering. That's a vibe. Yeah. That's a I real thing. Like, the, the, the spots in <laughs> Vegas are like that. <laughs> Where we go, they got a full bar in there. They got TVs everywhere. It's like a sports bar and lounge and you in, in Vegas. I'll be trying to recruit everybody to move to Vegas. He's yeah. recruiting you right now. I built a crib out there like a year and a half ago. One, just because financial purposes, you can't because the outsiders mm -hmm. <laughs> it done took over but yep. <laughs> it's quiet and it's suburban but the hospitality and the things to do out there is like top notch I like but they have like those kind of places where you like it's all about experience right even what you're talking about like people come gifted hats little things like that it's an experience those mm -hmm. are the things that people want to be a part of and yeah. um i feel like what you guys are creating in your space and these kind of platforms, it's an experience because we want our viewers, our friends, our family to watch these things and want to get involved in or just have a curiosity about these things. But these are the kind of experiences they should hear about. Yeah. The real things, 
but also too that it's amazing. It's an amazing position for a young black woman to have won an Emmy, um, doing what you love, yeah. you know, and then still also having the space and opportunity to do the creative things that might be just a passion, but can turn into something real. Yeah. But for somebody as young as you, um, you're so eloquent and mm -hmm. like, you know, you're so well-spoken and your, your parents have raised an amazing person, but um, to, to have that and for people to, to be highlighted, we were talking earlier, I feel like somebody your age, you don't get the, a lot of the, the opportunities for media because you're a, a transitioning into adulthood. Yeah. You get the teen vogue, you get all the teen skewing things, yeah. but your story needs to be heard by adults as well. Mm -hmm. And because it's gonna help them, it it's helps. Gonna help, it's gonna help. Yeah. I feel like people the feel way, like there's yeah, a, the way like, you speak, like yeah, like really. People, Seriously. people thirty don't have it figured out right 100%. now. You know what yeah. I mean? People in their forty, we're all still trying to figure out our footing in life. So, yeah. your stories, this this advocacy is is so important. And I'm just this is this has been an amazing conversation. I'm <laughs> I so love it. Like, <laughs> I loved it. You know what I mean? Yo, we needed we needed this. He and I, because yeah. you know this 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 thing, this show, this that we've uh, built together, yeah. it is. It's, it's a labor of love, but it is challenging. Mm. It is a challenging thing. And I think, you know, we went into it knowing, like, hey, it's going to be, it's going to be tough. But we were like, now we were like, yo, you know, some days we were like, yo, like, mm -hmm. and, you know, it's, it's he and I and, and our crew and everything. But, you know, so. What's the most so, challenging part? What's the most challenging yeah. part? Uh, I think that, I, I don't know. I think we might have different different answers but uh, I think sometimes just to like all the back behind the scenes politics things mm -hmm. that you face that any industry faces yeah. right that are par for the course but that doesn't mean that they're any less like mm -hmm. tiring it yeah. becomes like yo I am sick I'm tired yeah. but to have you guys on today and the energy that you guys have brought with you yo this is this is great mm -hmm. couple things before we go mm -hmm. Who, are, who is on the earrings, and we need to see your baby. Right. Oh, yes. Yeah. Okay, so this is Eartha Kitt on the earrings. Love. Yes, I love her Queen so Eartha. much. I got these from, like, a black-owned boutique shop in Brooklyn. Shop black. I love New York. Um, yeah. I'm so. doing this because of uh, Boomerang. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and, yes, let me go get my baby. Yeah, 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 My yeah. daughter. How are you? What's, what's, what's next, though? I know you, you've, been, you've been filmed. You were in Vancouver. I was in Vancouver. I have a show coming out called Cruel Summer. It's coming out next year. I'll watch that. Yeah. Is it part two? It's a we're, so, no, it's an anthology series now. Oh. So it's a completely new story. Oh, line. okay. Yeah. So this is how we do it. Wait. Oh. But yeah. Okay. Cruel Summer is dope. Cruel Summer season two. That's yeah. why it comes out. Yes. Wow. Live in the flesh. What? <laughs> yes, this is Emmy. I don't have my name play yet. They said they're sending it in December. But right. that's the one you walked off the yes, stage with. Yes, I walked home with that. Yeah. Oh yeah, I would have been like, y'all yeah. been getting this back. Because <laughs> I heard, don't you, don't you have to on other shows? You got to give them back, and then they send it to you. I honestly didn't know how it worked. That's how I thought it worked. I'm out of here. You had to like sign it out, and you take it home. And then they told us that we got an email being like, the thing with your name is gonna come in the mail, and then I think you just like attach it on there. But I'm definitely not sending her nowhere. I'm like, I'll go pick up the right. Yeah. <laughs> Who's the first person you called after you got out of the it's Or so the first person you talked to? Well, that's a good question. I, honestly, it was such a blur. By the time I got back to my seat, my phone was blowing up because I forgot. I'm like, oh, shit, this is on television. Like, <laughs> So people are sending me pictures, and I'm like, what? It was, like, so overwhelming. I just had to, like, put my phone down because I was trying to be present, and it was just like, it's one of those things I started having dreams about it like before just like well I was already having dreams just about like the show da, da, da. but it was another thing being there felt very very surreal so I don't even remember I mean I feel like the first per the first text I saw was from my friend Mark um and he was just like oh my god like <laughs> sent me this, like, this shot and I looked at it and I was oh, like this damn, is crazy real. and just put my phone down like it was just it was wild but I will say I feel like 
I don't know. It's one of those things where it's like I've always you, working in this business. I feel like we're taught to you know aspire after these awards, yeah. but. I've always seen how fickle it is when it comes to black creators. Oftentimes, we're not even nominated, let alone if we be nominated, we're probably not going to win. Like, there's just like this understanding that it's hit or miss. Mm. So I've never sought this as like a and token that's of why validation. It's more, that's why it's more amazing. Yeah. Exactly. It's one, and it's one of those things where it's like, yes, this is really nice. And like, I'm able to understand like the impact of it while at the same time acknowledging that like this is not the goalpost for me. And I don't think that this should be the goalpost for us. Yeah. You know what I mean? I think I, I, I like the idea. To me, it's more meaningful when people come up to me and they're like, yo, I was crying my eyes out watching the show. Yeah. And like my daughter, this helped me and my daughter with our body image. Like that to me, I'm like, that's the work, you know? Yeah. And for this, I'm just like, yes, this is amazing. But I think getting it also showed me like, huh, you know, this, this is, this is, um, I don't know. I feel like it's just it's sweeter when it's coming from our people. It is. Yeah. It's inspiring though. That's yeah. that's inspiring. That's, that's a huge. I'm gonna have to touch that when yeah. then, because yeah. I gotta, you know, I gotta. Like, one I, question: mm -hmm. Are you prepared in the next couple years to not be able to walk around without security? <laughs> no, I mean, listen. I'm just I'm very grateful for like everything that that um, that's happened, but I'm also like. It's interesting with what we're saying, like about like how when you reach your goalposts, like it's like, yeah. okay, but well, what's next? Yeah. Like I feel like I still like kind of lose sight of everything where I'm like, ah, oh, like I'm not, I need to be doing enough. So that's not even like on the forefront of my mind. I'm just like grind mode, like just keep going until like I really feel as though I don't even know what my end goal is, mm -hmm. but I think the end goal is really just happiness and peace. Yeah. Yeah, and is. until like I really just like to gain all of that, um, then I feel like I'll, I'll reach my end goal, but um, but this is like inspiring, and it's not something that I, I strive for, but it's also pretty dope to see a black woman be able to have this. It's not an honor, but like to be able to just like say like, "Yo, I want an Emmy." <laughs> like that's like so inspiring. So like I strive for that, and. It's not the angle, yeah. but like it's also like impactful. It's nice. It's, yes. it's impactful yes. nice. for sure. Yeah. It can yes. help you navigate exactly. and open some more right. doors. Yeah. Yeah. And it's a nice, especially as a black woman, I think it's nice to be able to like have something that other people are like will recognize. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Because yeah. sometimes it feels like you can accomplish everything and they're still just like, oh. so, yeah. but you're still a young black girl. You yeah. know what I mean? And yeah. so with this, in the, it's in the back of all my Zoom meetings. I'm like, yeah. 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 Right. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Like, Respect me, please. And, you know, like I want you to respect me, but if you ain't gonna do that, at least respect. Respect her. Respect respect her. her. Right. <laughs> Listen, thank you so much. Um, a sweet life, and it has been, it's been a, it's been an amazing, amazing day. Thank you guys so, so much. Mm -hmm.